coaches be as loud as they can. So if everybody can try and hold your fisting to a certain level, we'll try and be as loud as we can. So I first want to thank Buffalo Wild Wings for having us down here. A great opportunity for us to get out and about. Thank the great staff and those guys being generous and getting us out here for just five bucks to have a great lunch. So I appreciate them. Looking forward to a great week. This weekend kicks off our Knockout Cancer Week uh, in observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October. We've got a lot of things that we're going to do, starting with the soccer matches coming up this weekend. We're going to donate 50% of ticket proceeds from our Tackle Cancer Game on Saturday's football game to the Regional Cancer Care Institute and also selling some t-shirts uh, on the volleyball side of it. Uh, we're going to have to try and have a pink out at the upcoming volleyball game here next week as well. So that's where we'll start with head coach Tiffany McCampbell. She just got back from Dickinson State last night at about 1.30 in the morning, and she's here after a great win. So welcome up, coach. Thank you. Uh, after last week, after a great win over Black Hill State, um, we played University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Uh, Thursday night, um, I felt like we kind of came out and played a little bit flat. I feel like as we've talked about getting win over Black Hills, it's a very emotional win, emotional game for coaches and players. And I want to say I'm kind of talking about uh, that, that our Mac opponent last week, but I felt we kind of looked flat a little bit. Uh, University of Colorado Springs um, is probably one of the best teams that we've played this year. They're in the upper half of the R Mac. They're a very good team, best serving team we've probably played in the last four or five years. So. Um, even though the scores were close, I felt like we could have competed a lot better. Um, and then we had the weekend off, and last night we traveled to Dickinson State University. We beat them in three sets. Um, it's kind of hard to be on a bus for four hours and play a team, but at the end of the night, um, my husband, Anita, all day people have been saying, you won the game, so stop complaining. But I just felt like we could have played a little bit better. But that's okay. Um, got us to nine wins for the season, so we're sitting at nine and six. And so it's just kind of nice to come into a game today. Uh, to the office today and give the girls a day off and uh, just know that we've at least matched our win total within the last two years and looking forward to the next nine games as far as trying to be able to just continue to get better as a future RMAC uh, team. We actually are off for the next 12 days, so it's a nice break. We don't play until October 19th, as Nate said, which will be our uh, dig pink pink out game as well. So it's kind of nice just to get our team's rest um, just kind of get us a little time academically to just kind of get into groove a little bit. Um, we've got some role players that I think would really like to have some extra time in the gym too. Just kind of with our roster of 12 this year, it'll be nice to kind of have a little bit more individual attention that way. So, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a grind 15 games very quickly during this season. So, um, our next nine matches are going to be pretty tough. Um, October 19th, we have uh, Colorado. Sorry, Colorado Christian University, then we go to Adams State, and we go to Mesa. Then all three of those are towards the top of the RMAC. And so it's going to be a really good test as far as where we can compete in 2015, kind of see where we go from that end. So um, like Nate said, our volleyball girls are going to be at the game on Saturday selling pink t-shirts. They're going to be $15 each. And uh, proceeds are going to go to the Regional Care Institute as well. And so we're just excited to, as you guys all know, the month of October is pretty special for me. So anything we can do to contribute to Breast Cancer Awareness Month or anything like that is pretty, it's pretty special to me. And I know our kids appreciate that as well. So, does anybody have any questions for me? Brad? You want to go through the, some highlights? Oh, I would like to go through some highlights. Yes. Highlights this, up here. Uh, this is last night at Dickinson State. Jenna Cruiser had a pretty good match for us. She had 14 kills. Carson Garcia, our senior setter, we're going to really miss her next year. She's been a really good offensive threat for us. Um, freshman Emily Newton is in the middle here. Good pickup by Michaela Reese. Another good swing by Jenna. Like we said, Jenna finished the night with 14 kills, as did Sam Johnson. Skylar Larson is a freshman on our team, and I'm so proud that she has really just kind of come around as far as a defensive specialist from Stevens High School this year. She is really working hard to gain a lot of court time, and this is freshman Emily Newton, um, who you guys met last week, just continues to be very good offensively for us. Another good pass by Michaela Reese. Another great swing by Jenna. Jenna's really come around. Like we said, you've met her as well as a redshirt sophomore this year. And then we've got Sam Johnson up front here with Carson. And another good swing by Jenna. But we did a pretty good job of trying to take 
they can sit out of their game a little bit. Sam does a really good job of just kind of pulling some blockers all the time, especially with her power here. We had some pretty good defensive rallies last night. They were a much improved team from the last time that we played them and a good block by Sam. So it was really important for us to kind of really push through and just kind of wear this team down a little bit. transition with the ball like I said Emily just continues to, to mature and grow being a player behind Sam a little bit in this rotation and I thought Dickinson fought really hard especially playing at home to be as aggressive as they could with us with the ball that way so all in all I mean a win is a win and so I'll be happy with that so I think we definitely can continue to improve and especially if we want to compete in the RMAC next year there's gonna be a lot of things we're gonna need to improve. Anybody have any questions? We've talked a lot about Sam Johnson in the last two years, so I thought it would be great for her to come and get some public speaking experience. Sam Johnson is a Richard Jr. senior academically from Belle Plaine, Minnesota, and she is a biology major. So, Sam. <laughs> Sam Johnson, like she said, Redshirt Jr., um, biology major from Belle Plaine, Minnesota, and So if you have any questions, just go ahead. Um, I blame my sister for coming here because I went to Colorado my, my freshman year. I hated it. It was awful. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't a very good experience. And my sister took a she took a visit here, and they could not stop talking about how wonderful Coach McCampbell was, the school was, and the volleyball program, and how everyone was just just a great community. So I decided. I was pretty excited when my freshman roommate, Laura Beckman, decided to transfer also, so I just keep stealing people from the volleyball team. How is it playing with your sister? <laughs> you guys ask me that every time I'm here. Uh, playing with Kirsten's okay. <laughs> we played in high school and she was my setter. She hated me, but <laughs> and now that she's not really setting that much anymore, it's a little easier. We don't have to come in contact with each other as much, so <laughs> we're definitely a lot closer than we used to be. was was hard was very hard 
We definitely didn't start the first game the way we wanted. Um, we were down 4 nothing in halftime, but we made some changes and we really had some players not get a lot of minutes. Step up in the second half against Northwest Nazarene. We actually outplayed them and won the second half one nothing, which was really nice to see to have some young kids step up and, and really learn to compete. And then the Billings game, I thought was one of our better games of the year with one of the teams that is climbing in the GNAC. 0-0 uh, zero, zero at halftime. Uh, and it was the last 30 minutes after that road trip that put us under a little bit. Um, but we had some great efforts from Lars Scow, Andreas Scow, Mike McGraw, David Cabrera, uh, Cody Wellman is a little feisty freshman. If you think of he's a, he's a little pip squeak um, to be a level but man, that guy fights with the tenacity of a, a pit bull. And it was good for him to, to win his spot. So I think uh, still a lot of bright things. Uh, in a lot of ways, the next two weeks are pretty sad for us. Uh, our last uh, four home games as member of the GNAC Conference. But in some ways, it's pretty enlightening, too, that next year we'll be able to uh, to showcase some different teams that we'll be playing against as members of the RMAC Conference. So it's kind of bittersweet for us. Those coaches have been great to us and, and, and kind of keep supporting us, so it'll be good for them to show off our area and hopefully get them back someday. But uh, we're looking forward. We play 7 o'clock on uh, Thursday versus Simon Frazier. And then we play uh, 7 o'clock uh, Saturday versus Western Washington. Do we have clips? Yep. Oh, and we have clips. Here we go. This is our penalty kick at uh, at Northwest Nazarene. David Cabrera, sophomore, steps up and does a good job. It was a beautiful atmosphere. They have a nice field right in the middle of their quad, in the middle of the stadium. Steps up and with good composure, sees the goal people the other way and and gets a goal. So that was good for him. <clears throat> this is us with some good attacking play. We were really all over in the second half. Uh, Forcing their guys to, uh, oh, this is Montana Billings. That was a, a save by uh, Braden Federley. Here's another good uh, little combination. We're playing and fighting. Brandon Land plays inside. We were able to get it. This is us, and this is probably our second best chance of the game. Their goalie comes up huge, and we're adding pressure. <laughs> This is us defense. This was probably one of the best sequence for us defensively. You know, fighting and keep going. So it was uh, it was an eventful week. But uh, like I said, I'm lucky. We're lucky to be at home for the next two weeks. And I know after a trip like that, we had a bunch of kids freaking out about school and, and studying for the academic record. So it's good to have them home for a little bit. Um, any questions for me? All right, thank you for all your support. Hopefully, have some good news next week. Thanks, Coach. I think another guy who had a pretty long uh, road trip. Uh, when I calculated the mileage with Stacy Collins, the Hard Rocker football team, looking forward to this weekend tackle cancer day coming up on Saturday at one o'clock against Central Washington. Here's Stacy Collins. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everybody, for coming out here. It's great to be down at Buffalo Wild Wings and excited for the crowd. Uh, long trip down to Humboldt State. Played a very good Humboldt State team. Got behind early and it never caught up. And give credit to them, I think. And their, their three home games, and we were their third. They were up 30 to nothing on the Zeus Pacific in the first half when they played them at home. I think they jumped up on Western Oregon 24 to nothing half. So they do a great job down in their venue. I think they had about 7,000, 8,000 people there, and it was rocking good. So, uh, and you put that on top of it, that is a talented football team. I spent a lot of time in the GNAC, and fortunate to win a handful of GNAC titles, and they're going to be right up there, and they'll be in the national picture. So give them credit. They, uh, they're talented on offense, up front very good. Uh, they were fast with the bats, got out space on us defensively. 
Uh, they're doing a great job, and they certainly got after some special team space. So some areas we got to improve. Uh, saw as good speeds I think we're going to see. And so we got a few clips, right, Brad, on, uh, on the state game. Couple clips here of uh, Danny Ziegler. You know, Danny's a true freshman for us from, from Bellingham, Washington. He's done a great job, man. He's an ultra competitor, really stepped up as a true freshman, and excited about Danny all the way around. What he is on the field for us. He is uh, a tireless worker, does a great job, tremendous in the classroom, and he's going to be stalwart of this program uh, for the future. So excited to see Danny continue to do extremely well. We did some things early, moving the football. We weren't able on some critical third and fourth downs early to, to continue on. There's a corner route to Zach Huber. Uh, Zach, Zach's done a nice job receiving early on. He had an ankle injury that kept him out of most of camp and there were a couple first games. But Zach's really came around, progressed a lot in the, couple, the last couple games and excited about where Zach's at. Now he's healthy, the things he can do. Zach also was a hurdler for us on our track team. Okay, this is Marcus Sanchez. You know, Marcus has been consistent for us out on the outside. Uh, California kid, they got a chance to go back home and play. And we, again, Marcus continues to give us some versatility on that outside with having Xavier Matthews back and Tim Crunch on the outside and Pat Berkey. So a nice play by Marcus Sanchez. And this last one's another one of Danny Ziegler, again, who who's, continues to do a great job. He's really impressed as a true freshman. So this week we'll, we have Central Washington at home uh, in the tackle cancer game. So we'll be pinked up, pink spatted up, big socks. So it'll be, it'll be a great tribute to, uh, to to that event. We're excited for it. Uh, Central Washington is a solid football team. Um, they're two and three right now. Had a couple tough losses against Azusa Pacific last week, which is a conference game. They lost a close one to Western Oregon earlier in the season. Uh, certainly very familiar with them. I spent three years there. I think there's eight guys starting for them that I recruited, so I know real well. As you go down on that roster, it's always funny when you, you're away four or five years and these guys are growing up. Um, really good speed uh, on the receiver end. Uh, their skill positions are corners, their DBs, extremely good. They get a very talented back. Uh, they run some schematic stuff, certainly defensively. That will cause some problems and they're a very good football team, a top end division two football team that will be coming into town. So they are busting, so it's not going to hurt my feelings. They'll be in the bus for 16, 17 hours and I got zero rewards for them on that, I promise you that. So, um, uh, great staff. I know a lot of those guys that work with some of them in other places. They'll be a good football team, well coached and talented, ready to come here. Any questions that I can answer for you about the Humboldt State game or the upcoming Central Washington game? It's located in Ellensburg, Washington, which is literally right in the middle of the state. Probably close to Yakima, if anybody's familiar with Yakima. About a two hour drive uh, from Seattle. So, yeah. Not really, you know, by the time we got out of there and got in, and the tough thing about Humboldt State is you're in California by name. I mean, if you look at where you're really at, it's northern California coast, so you don't have a lot of time to really get through there. So we weren't able to use it maybe, you know, next year when we go down to Azusa, it's in that L.A. area, probably use it some more. But Humboldt's pretty isolated. There's no way in, no way out, and we certainly would have liked to if we had some time. Uh, Trent, he, 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 he played most of the game, got his wrist hit a couple of times, and then at that point in the game, we wanted to give Evan the ball and let him play a little bit, too. Uh, right now, you know, we lost Sam Cowell for the season uh, early on with, with, with his ankle on that surgery. Uh, last week, David Jackport, DN Force, wasn't able to play with a knee injury. I think David will be back this week, so we're looking at, at, at that. And, uh, you know, we had so we'll see where he's at on that piece. But, you know, Pat Burke came in and snapped extremely well. Covered down for us. Uh, we have a handful of other injuries, which week six, 
you know, that's college football. You're going to have some injuries. Uh, but nobody sees him ending that, you know, right now. That means some bumps and bruises, some things we're trying to get healthy. Trey Better's knee, he hasn't played since the Black Hills game. And so we'll see. He'll be a game day decision again with his knee. So nothing new, but some of the same recurring, you know, depth issues that we've had. Yeah, certainly. You know, with, with the amount, you know, we got I think we got 26 California kids on the roster. So even though it is a pretty big trek for a lot of those families, there was a lot of families there. It's always nice when those guys can can play in front of their crowd. And, and certainly a year from now, when we go to zoos, I think we'll see that even more. Great. Thanks for coming out. A couple of housekeeping items for everybody. Again, a big thanks to Buffalo Wild Wings. If you can, they're giving a heck of a deal here for five dollars. Please leave some tips for the, the great service here at your table. So leave some tips before you head out. Uh, one other thing, we'll be back on campus next Wednesday with Marco's Pizza. So we'll be back in the Hall of Fame at 12 o'clock again next Wednesday. And again, big thanks for you guys for coming out here. And look forward to doing this once a month. Uh, we'll keep you posted on, on when we're going to be out here. So enjoy your lunch and thanks for coming.